Good morning, and uh, look, welcome to the uh, Calyx webinar, number four in the series. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the last few. Uh, my name is Michael Wheatland, uh, and today we're going to be having a chat about uh, biogas, uh, how biogas is created, uh, how it relates to the uh, the big challenges we face coming into the future. Um, it's a great topic. Uh, Calyx has spent a lot of time working on this, um, so it's it's uh, it's going to be quite interesting in terms of uh, understanding the process of, of generating electricity and energy and, and being able to reuse that the waste from energy. Uh, I did this is a paper that I did present at the uh, uh, the one of the renewable energy conferences up in Ballarat this year, the Waste to Energy Conference, which was a, a fantastic conference. Uh, I've added a few uh, bits and pieces just in terms of the uh, the basics of of biogas and how it all works, uh, just to give you a bit of a uh, uh, a primer, um, plus to, to give people, uh, if people are watching from the, the wastewater industry or maybe food manufacturing, uh, farmers, um, there, there might be uh, people who are interested about uh, how to actually go about getting their own biogas system. So I thought I'd include some basics there and uh, some information about uh, how, how to go about it. Um, look, uh, while we're waiting for people to get online, I'd like to take... Uh, a moment for, for you to be able to log into YouTube. Uh, this is a live webinar, so this is me talking right now. Um, uh, if you put uh, questions in the uh, the chat over on the side, I'm going to be able to answer them uh, live during the the uh, during the presentation. With any luck, I might be able to get to them as we're doing the presentation, but otherwise, uh, I'll have a look at them at the end if there's if there's ones that are complex. So in order to ask questions, you do have to make sure that you're logged into YouTube. So um, if you could do that now, that, that would be fantastic. Uh, okay, look, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into the presentation. Okay, so the presentation. Uh, we're gonna be talking about enhancing biogas uh, production. Um, so the questions are, what is, what is biogas? Uh, where does it come from? How do you get it? Uh, the, the, the value of biogas. Um, so what is, the, uh, what is the, the, the use cases? Once you've generated the biogas, how do you get value out of that? Uh, we're gonna quickly talk about funding and set up, how, how you can go about uh, getting a, a biogas facility on, on your premises or uh, at, at your waste facility. Also, uh, then we'll move into talking about boosting biogas volumes, how to improve biogas quality. So if you've got an existing system, how do you get the most out of that system? Uh, also around capturing phosphate, because that, that's gonna be a key part of the, uh, the value add that Calyx provides in terms of getting the most out of most value out of, um, out of your, uh, your system. So whether it's through uh, directly through biogas or uh, it could be also through, uh, through the, the sludge, so composting waste in, in terms of the sludge. Um, and because there's, a, there's been a couple of questions in the last few webinars about, uh, about how we produce our product, uh, I thought it'd be a good chance to do a virtual site tour so that uh, it gives people an idea about how Calyx makes our product uh, and, the, uh, and the, the effort that goes into uh, producing really high quality products. So let's let's jump in. Like, what is, what is biogas? It's it's pretty simple. It's just methane. Um, it's produced through uh, through anaerobic digestion. So often it will be uh, whether it's uh, as you can see here cow poo. Um, there's a lot of farms in Europe that like just just farmers who take their waste from whether it's crops or animals. Uh, it could be manure. Uh, it could be distillery effluent. It could be um, effluent from a uh, um, a dairy thing, things like that. Uh, you then uh, slurry that up in a uh, in a large gas tank, in a in a tank which is essentially just covered with uh, with a, a big tarp to collect the uh, the methane that comes off the top. Um, you keep it warm. You stir it up so that the bacteria can generate that methane, and then you use that methane for uh, whether it's uh, whether it's electricity. You can generate electricity with it. You can uh, use it for heating. Uh, so. You can use it to reheat, uh, say, your anaerobic pond or something, so that you can uh, in improve the efficiency of the pond, and you don't have to upgrade when you get to the uh, the capacity. Uh, so that way, you reduce your, your capex spend. 
it's pretty simple. Um, the, uh, the the waste, so the, there is solids, a, a spent waste that you have to extract from it, but that can be composted uh, and, and reused. And we'll see where uh, the uh, where the Calyx products uh, come in in terms of uh, maximizing value in both of those streams, whether it's the gas or whether it's the solid waste discharge. Uh, this is what they look like. So it's it is simply uh, a, a tank with a with a tarp on top. It's obviously all um, properly connected and sealed, so the gas can't escape. But it, it, it's really quite simple. Um, they can be as simple as you can see here uh, as. Uh, a hole in the ground with a big tarp on the top that's weighted down on the side so the gas can't escape. Um, you can also store the gas. So you can see kind of up up here, there's a picture of a, uh, a gas storage dome. Uh, that gas storage dome essentially just collects the, the, the methane that comes off the uh, off the pond. That way it, uh, it expands and contracts depending on how much gas you've got. So that way, uh, if you've got, um, say if you're generating electricity and you've got a, a fluctuating demand for for the biogas, uh, you can use the uh, the volume of the the storage facility in order to smooth out the uh, the, the electricity production, so you can uh, maximise your, uh, your your output in terms of electricity and maximise your value. Another way that you can uh, uh, so that sorry so after storage and generation, you then need to use the biogas somehow. So there's a couple of ways you can. Uh, use a uh, what you can see here is a, um, a plate heat exchanger. So as I said, you can you can use the energy from the gas uh, directly, or, or use it through a boiler to warm up uh, the anaerobic processes to, to get that big bacteria uh, really working. That way, as I said, you you improve the efficiency of your pond and you can uh, destroy more organics, uh, and it it ends up with uh, less methane and less carbon dioxide emitted to the atmosphere. So really good for the environment uh, and it also uh, helps you in terms of reducing your solids load so you don't have to spend as much uh, when you need to dispose of those solids because there's less of them you've uh, you've destroyed them through the anaerobic process um, and the more sophisticated way um, is to generate electricity so you can see this package just over on the side there um, this this image here it's uh, it's a package generator uh, that's used to uh, take biogas and just directly uh, generate electricity from it. So it's it's quite a simple uh, simple system. You can um, there's lots of uh, companies in Australia and around the world that uh, are able to facilitate uh, purchase or, or construction and installation of those. Um, and if you're interested, um, it's it's worth getting in touch, and we can put you in uh, put you in touch with those uh, consultancies or engineering companies. Um, in terms of the uh, the, the use chain or the value chain. So you can see over on the uh, the far left hand side here, this is where wastes come from. So it can be from, from landfill, it could be from industrial waste, agricultural energy and crops. Um, there's, there's lots of options there. Uh, sewage sludge, bio waste, uh, there's so any, anywhere where there's a solid waste that's got organic matter in it. Um, you can extract that as uh, as energy, so it's 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 really good value in terms of uh, it's f energy for nothing really. So you not you don't have to mine coal, you don't have to extract gas or oil. It's just energy that's produced from our current resources that would just be put it being put into landfill and emitting methane to the atmosphere. So uh, as I said, really good for the environment, but also really good for the bottom line. It's it's uh, very high value. So we we produce the biogas uh, as a part of the uh, as a part of the anaerobic process, uh, so anaerobic digestion. Uh, the the gas can be used in boilers for for energy. Um, it's cogeneration, so you can actually uh, use electricity to generate. So you can use a generator to generate electricity and use the the uh, the waste heat from that system to uh, create uh, more energy for whether it's a whether it's for an industrial process or it could just be for reheating the uh, the pond. Um, there's also biomethane use, so there's you can potentially uh, inject it into the grid. They do a lot of that over in Europe. Europe's got a lot of biogas systems compared to the rest of the world. I'll come to that in just a second um, because we've got a lot of potential here in Australia um, if you're looking for, for ways to uh, get more value out of your waste streams. Um, and of course the, uh, 
the the digestate or the uh, the waste solids. Uh, you know, you, you can use it as a, a liquid fertilizer, and the the waste solids are great for composting and and, and putting on crops. So you get a, a circular economy going on. Um, and if you capture the phosphate in those solids, it means that you you get a higher value um, compost uh, for fertilizers. To give you a bit of an idea of uh, of how much uptake there has been around the world, so Europe is the leader in terms of the uh, biogas generation at 178 terawatt hours. Uh, so that that's that's a significant investment that they've made. It is largely farmers. So if you if you drive through the Europe countryside, you'll uh, through through Germany and that you'll often see just a, a farm with lots of cows there, and they'll have a biodigester sitting in the backyard um, because it's it's really they're really simple to operate. They generate electricity, and you can get almost more value from the biogas and electricity that you generate than from you know the cows uh, and the milk that they output. So in terms of in, in, in terms of uh, Europe, they've, they've done incredibly well in uh, setting up the systems to be able to allow people and companies to invest in these systems. Uh, Asia, specifically around China and that, is, is doing quite well as well, 110 uh, terawatt hours. So that's a, that's a significant step. America, not so great, 59. And uh, Oceania, or around Australia, the Australian and South Asia region, Southeast Asia, uh, about five terawatt hours. So. Uh, considering we're a pretty significant producer of uh, agriculture and agricultural waste because we've got so much land, that's uh, that's a lot of energy that we're just throwing away. So, um, as you can see, Africa's uh, still got a long way to go as well. But um, all that means is that there's a lot of potential there. How do you how do you get funding for things like this? So, the Australian government and state governments. So. The Australian Federal Government runs uh, ARENA, or the uh, Australian Renewable Energy As uh, Association, uh, sorry, Energy Agency. Um, so that they uh, they provide funding and assistance in, in order to uh, get projects like this off the ground. So does local sustainability uh, um, government organisations. So it could be uh, Sustainability Victoria uh, and or other uh, sustainability or environmental uh, departments in each of the states. Uh, and there's also associations like the Clean Energy Finance, Clean Energy Finance Corporation and Bioenergy Australia that uh, that help with uh, getting whether it's government grant funding or it could be seed funding. There's a few different ways that you can fund these systems. So uh, if you're interested, I'd suggest jump on the websites uh, of those different agencies. Um, there's also consultancies around the place which Calix can put you in touch with. So if you're interested in uh, if you've got a waste stream and you're interested in investing in something like that, please get in touch and we can uh, we can facilitate that conversation with uh, with a uh, consultancy in in your area. We do work with uh, renewable energy con uh, consultants all all across Australia. Um, we're actually looking at uh, we're doing a feasibility study at the moment that to look at putting a uh, biogas facility actually at our uh, at our plant. Um, so that that's going to be an interesting um, next step. Uh, now, in terms of uh, what I wanted to look at next, I wanted to present with you, present to you a uh, a case study where we've had strong, we've used Calix products with strong success um, in order to improve the anaerobic process uh, on site there and get the most out of the biogas systems. Excuse me. Okay, so. Um, the success story, it's a, uh, it's a piggery in Western Victoria. Uh, they have a, as you can see, there's a, uh, a biodigester here. Um, it's got a floating head, so as the, uh, as the gas is generated, that head like lifts up and lowers down as they, uh, as they produce and consume it. Um, what we were looking at is uh, looking at reducing the hydrogen sulfide, avoiding chemical scrubbing, so they were having to um, take the biogas and they were having to remove that hydrogen sulfide uh, because the hydrogen sulfide level was quite high it was going to damage the electrical generator so we looked at uh, ways we could we could improve that getting more biogas because of course um, more biogas per white per volume of, uh, of waste is, is pretty important in terms of the efficiency of the unit um, higher calorific value is also very important so if you can get more methane into the into the biogas uh, that way uh, you can get more electricity out per volume of biogas generated. 
um, and of course more electricity being generated. So the uh, I've, I've kind of been through those, but uh, yeah, we're looking at generating more biogas, generating more power, uh, reducing blockages with struvite as well. So um, Calix products can capture phosphate, uh, which is a, a, a significant benefit of using something like ActiMag. Um, so that way you can capture the phosphate within the sludge, which improves the uh, um, the value of the sludge in terms of a composted uh, uh, waste that you can put as a fertilizer, whether it's on crops or, or pine plantations and trees and things like that. Um, uh, it, it improves the uh, the value of that of that sludge waste, the solid waste, um, and also reduce reducing the sodium hydroxide uh, consumption, adding adding caustic soda or sodium hydroxide into these systems in order to control pH and alkalinity. Um, or it, it's it's kind of okay in terms of adjusting the pH, but in order to maintain um, a, a good conversion uh, from waste into uh, into biogas within the anaerobic system, you need high alkalinity. And uh, sodium hydroxide just doesn't provide that. Uh, we did do a webinar last week that we, where we talked about um, pH, the difference between pH and alkalinity and why it's so important to, to push that alkalinity up because uh, every time you, you put um, sodium hydroxide or caustic soda, those kind of strong bases or strong alkalis into the system, you're gonna be killing a lot of bugs um, as, you, as you add them in. Um, and the high alkalinity allows you to maintain a stable pH through the process. Uh, so that way you can, you can maximize the amount of bacteria within the biogas digester. So this, uh, this specific system, uh, there was a balancing pond. So as you can see here, a balancing pond followed by a grit removal. So it's essentially just removal of stones and rocks and stuff like that. Uh, there was a DAF, which is a dissolved air flotation tank. That's used to remove uh, like fats and greases, so it floats out the uh, the solids to concentrate them. Um, that was put into the, an anaerobic digestion tank, followed by a secondary anaerobic digestion tank, uh, and the gas is then passed through a uh, H2S scrubber, um, where essentially you react the, uh, the the hydrogen sulfide with water in order to produce sulfuric acid, uh, and that removes the that. Uh, the, the hydrogen sulfide from the gas so it doesn't produce acid when it goes into the uh, uh, into the generator so it doesn't corrode the generator um, this was the uh, these are the systems so it's a, a 1300 megawatt uh, generator uh, it's producing 214 kilowatt hours um, uh, kilowatt hours uh, electricity 192 kilowatt hours so thermal power 214 kilowatt hours and electricity 192 um, so it's a look. It's a fairly small system, but um, it works. Um, these are the typical uh, feed analysis. So um, it's probably not going to mean much to to a lot of people. But if you've got your own uh, digestion system, uh, it gives you a bit of an idea of uh, of where we started to to show um, the uh, the difference between the the start and the the end result. So looking at a, a biological oxygen demand of about ten thousand. Uh, chemical oxygen, oxygen demand of about a third of that uh, and those are the typical uh, ammonia, phosphorus, uh, volatile fatty acid results that we were getting. We started off uh, doing um, testing in the laboratory just using a, a simple system so we, we thought what's the best way to compare it? We ended up just buying bottles so setting up little uh, anaerobic digesters on the on the bench so we, we set bottles in a uh, water bath to make sure they're maintained at a, a constant temperature during the process we attached balloons on the top and we essentially just measured the amount of uh, gas that was that was coming off the, uh, the the little anaerobic digestion bottle by how much the uh, balloon blows up so fairly crude way to measure it but very effective in the end so we used a control, so as you can see here on the uh, on the far left, there was a control where nothing was added. It was just the, uh, the the digestion, the natural digestion. We tried different alkalis like hydrated lime powder, caustic soda, just to adjust that pH to try and get the uh, get the the pH balance right, so those those bugs thrived. But they didn't seem to uh, it didn't seem to make much of a difference. The caustic soda, as you can see, went down, um, indicating that the uh, as you add the caustic soda, you're gonna be slaughtering bacteria because there's gonna be a spike in pH, which the bacteria just don't like. 
standard MHL, so commodity grade magnesium hydroxide. Uh, we, we added that and compared that against the ActiMag as well. And that ha didn't have, it improved because it increased the alkalinity, but it didn't, it, commodity grade magnesium hydroxide doesn't have the high surface area that ActiMag has. So it does seem to be that the, the high surface area, really high quality products that, uh, that Calyx produces um, to, to make that ActiMag that has a significant impact on the, uh, on the amount of biogas that can be generated. Uh, so after we did the testing, um, why did the customer decide to go with us? I mean, there's obviously value there in terms of generating more biogas um, and getting more value out of the system, but um, importantly, it's, it's really safe to handle. So this specific site, uh, they were using, um, using caustic and other things like that. Caustic is, is, is very corrosive, so if you get it on yourself, it, uh, it can burn you, it can really hurt your eyes. Um, ActiMag is incredibly safe to handle. Um, I've been known to <laughs> kind of taste the stuff uh, at conferences and stuff, and, and that, uh, and people are a bit shocked. But um, it is uh, it is just a, a magnesium hydroxide, just with a with a high surface area. Um, so it is it is incredibly safe in order to handle, uh, but also to dose into the uh, into the system for the bacteria. Um, it's used uh, it's used mating, mating sorry it's used. It's made using technology that can capture carbon dioxide. So um, it's, it's really good for the environment and we're developing this technology constantly to, to be able to uh, capture that carbon dioxide from industry moving forward. Uh, it also improves the uh, salinity. So if you're not using caustic to adjust your pH, it means that you can, you can reduce the amount of uh, salt or, or sodium that you've got in your effluent, which is fantastic if you're discharging that effluent, whether it's either onto crops or you're watering paddocks and that, those type of things. It, it reduces the amount of salt that's uh, that's in the discharge, which is, is great for, for land and, and, and maximizing the value off that land. And also you can use use the uh, the phosphate that's captured in the sludge to, to improve the value of that composting. The phosphate is captured um, through uh, store essentially storing it in the sludge so um, we take uh, within the the solution you take magnesium you take uh, nitrogen and you take phosphorus uh, and it combines into a uh, struvite particle uh, that happens because of the high surface area that happens actually within the crystal structure of the uh, the acti mag uh, and that that act that is then captured within the sludge stream so it doesn't it doesn't enter the uh, the liquid stream where it can where the phosphorus can deposit on pipes um, it's captured so that that way it reduces your um, uh, your maintenance costs you don't need to do as many uh, pipe cleans and, and that type of thing uh, but also it means that the phosphate is is captured inside the sludge so that when you compost that sludge uh, plants are able to access that phosphate which is an essential part of life um, I did a presentation about this, about the phosphate cycle during the last webinar. Uh, if you're interested in, in how you can capture phosphate uh, within your wastewater system, it doesn't need to be an anaerobic digestion system, it could be any system. Uh, but if you're interested in the sustainability in, of that and, uh, and why you would do that, uh, I'd suggest go back and watch one of the uh, other webinars that we've got on our YouTube channel or linked on our website. It's, uh, it's definitely an interesting uh, viewing experience to, to have a chat about the sustainability of that. So once we applied the product directly into this anaerobic digestion system, uh, this biogas system, uh, what results did we get? So uh, we've got a baseline there. As you can see, the, the baseline over a period of a, of a year was uh, you know, fairly stable. Once we added ActiMag to the system, um, you can see the, uh, the biogas increase was significant. So. In terms of volume, we're looking at uh, about 30% for this specific system. Um, now it might be a bit more or a bit less depending on the system that you're running or the efficiency that it's currently running at, but uh, it, the, the ActiMag has, because of that high surface area and the interaction with the bacteria, it's able to really boost the, uh, the amount of methane that these bacteria can produce. So you get a lot more gas for the same equipment and the same amount of waste. Energy production obviously goes up with the amount of gas. There's, there's obviously a, there's going to be a limit there uh, in terms of how much you can use, uh, reaching the limit of the, uh, the the generators rather than the the biogas digester. 
um, but we could we could produce uh, an average of 15 percent more uh, electricity out of this system so you know significant impact in terms of uh, cost saving uh, with using that electricity on site to power um, you know things like lights and and other other bits and pieces that they used another really important aspect is gas quality um, so gas quality uh, is is almost important almost as important as the amount of the amount of biogas that's actually coming off the system so I was just checking the um, the the live chat uh, I've we haven't got any uh, anyone commenting on the live chat as yet but look if you if you've got any questions or you're interested in anything specific please drop the drop the questions in the side there and uh, and I'll hopefully be able to get get to them um, after this presentation so please don't hesitate type in your questions and I'll uh, it, it won't it won't break uh, the webinar <laughs> you can uh, you can keep watching while you while you do that um, so I'll, I'll try and get to those as they as they come in um, anyway back to what I was saying gas quality gas quality is uh, is almost as important as gas volume as well so uh, the the gas quality is measured by how much methane is within the biogas as compared to carbon dioxide. So any anaerobic system is going to produce both. Um, but the we added ActiMag into the system um, and it, what it essentially did was we were able to increase the amount of methane that was being generated uh, compared to the carbon dioxide by, by like 9%, around 9% in this specific system. So uh, that, that produced a... A, a fantastic increase in calorific value which essentially means you can extract more um, electricity from it at the end because you're not you're not heating up that um, the additional amount of carbon dioxide so it's it's pure energy uh, we've got a couple of questions come in actually so Mel um, how are the anaerobic bacteria affected by the pH levels so uh, anaerobic bacteria they love pH that's fairly neutral so keeping Keeping the pH kind of between six and eight is, is critically important. Um, when you add something like, uh, uh, so I'll just switch over so you can actually see this properly. Um, when you add something like a uh, caustic soda, um, essentially what you're doing is you're, you're adding an incredibly high pH uh, material in or into the system, um, which you'll end up with localized pockets of, of really high pH, which essentially kills the bacteria in those pockets before it has time to mix through the digester, um, the, the, the biogas uh, digestion system or the, uh, the, the tank or the, the pond or whatever you're using. So uh, it's especially important to use uh, products with a really, like a really high alkalinity, but a relatively low pH or stable pH around that neutral, neutral area. Um, ActiMag is a, a great product to use for that because ActiMag has is uh, it's a magnesium hydroxide and it's got uh, the, one of the highest alkalinities uh, for any um, alkali or, or um, uh, basic product on the market, um, but it's got a relatively low pH. So uh, the the natural pH of the the ActiMag is sitting around somewhere between eight and nine and a half, whereas Caustic's got a pH of fourteen. So if you add if you add the uh, the caustic with a pH of 14 um, to the system, you, you're going to end up with uh, some fairly significant um, uh, bacterial uh, bacteria deaths in the area. Whereas if you add if you add ActiMag, it's got a chance to mix through the entire system. Um, it's a little bit slower acting than the caustic as well, so it's not going to dissolve straight away. It stays as a, a solid as it's mixing through the digester. Um, that way you're able to maintain a, a good pH all the way through the digestion system um, Well, not so you don't kill off the bacteria um, and as the bacteria uh, Break down those organics into volatile fatty acids or acetic acid those type of things um, The system would naturally become more acidic But because the the ActiMag is in there as a solid as the system becomes more acidic uh, it's that acid is consumed by the uh, by the ActiMag or neutralized by the ActiMag. So that way, uh, that that high alkalinity gives you a, a really stable pH through the process. So um, it's that that's really one of the the big benefits that we get um, from uh, from the systems. Uh, Conan, um, 
Uh, does Calyx do full turnkey projects? So, uh, or do we only supply Actimax? So, no, we don't. We don't actually build anaerobic digesters. Uh, we've got a lot of partnerships and, and we work with a lot of consultancies uh, that do install these systems. So don't hesitate to, to get in touch. We can facilitate those conversations, uh, but we don't install the anaerobic digestion systems. Um, there, there's a lot of government funding out there for feasibility studies. So if you, if you are interested, uh, it's definitely worth uh, getting in touch. Uh, we can put you in touch with a consultancy in your local area. Uh, and we can work with you to get the most out of that system as you get it set up over time uh, in order to, um, like using ActiMag within the within the biogas system in order to like really boost the amount of uh, methane that's coming off those systems from, from right at the start. Uh, we might just switch back to the presentation now, uh, but please feel free to... Uh, send in uh, any more questions on the side there ask the questions it's uh it's it's definitely meant to be an interactive process okay so uh, we talked about gas quality so boosting the amount of methane within the within that biogas is important because once you've generated that carbon dioxide it's really hard to get it out so it has to pass through the the electrical generator which wastes heat and it doesn't generate as much electricity so uh, we were able to see 9% um, increase in the amount of methane, the ratio between methane and carbon dioxide in that biogas for this system. So that's a pretty significant impact. Um, just to give you a bit of an idea, a summary of the benefits. So reducing phosphate, uh, improving biogas uh, production. So in terms of volume, in terms of quality, reduced struvite in pipes. So that can be particularly a problem on the discharge of the, the anaerobic digesters where with a the, uh, the effluent's becoming cold and it's going through high turbulence systems. So uh, using ActiMag, you're able to capture that, that phosphate, which reduces the amount of struvite buildup. Um, improving the amount of uh, electricity or, or kilowatt hours per cubic meter of gas, just through that increased uh, uh, biogas generation. Uh, better stability in the system. So um, pH and uh, controlling the pH and alkalinity really well. Uh, ActiMag is, is fantastic for that. Um, Reducing hydrogen sulfide so you don't, you don't have as much maintenance costs in terms of repairs on the, the electrical generator. Um, and it, it really is a safe additive. Uh, you can, you can uh, apply it to the process without too many um, uh, risk mitigation uh, measures. Much safer than something like caustic. Uh, the ActiMag is, is produced locally um, through cutting edge technology. And I was hoping just to give you a bit of a, a site tour. Um, I went out to site to do a bit of, uh, um, to, to take some videos to be able to show you uh, as a part of this webinar. Because as I said, there's been a few questions in the last couple of webinars. So look, let's have a, let's have a quick chance to, uh, to, to have a look at that. Uh, and we'll come back to this in a second. Calyx sources magnesite from around Australia and around the world, including our mine site in South Australia at Myrtle Springs. We control the local supply chain, so that gives you confidence around continuity of supply. The next step within the process is we take this magnesite rock and we convert it into a powder for processing. The first step of the Calyx process involves taking the rock and grinding it and crushing it down to a very fine powder. We then sift that powder to create a particle size distribution that's ideal for end product stability. This is the Calyx CFC Calciner. It produces an ultra high surface area magnesium oxide powder to create your products. It's also built around sustainable principles. So it has the capability to capture carbon dioxide as a part of the process. This technology is core to Calyx values 
for solving global challenges and addressing the CO2 emissions of industry. Calix has ActiMag hydration plants like this around Australia and around the world. That way we can produce the ActiMag and magnesium hydroxide fresh for your process. It also means that we've got experts who know about the product locally in your area to help you along your journey to switch to ActiMag to maximise your process. Okay, well, I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, the site tour. Uh, should give you a little bit more of an idea about how the the ActiMag and other our other magnesium hydroxide products are produced. Uh, as you can see, we take great pride in uh, in our technology uh, and the sustainability of our systems, uh, as well as the the really high quality products and unique products that we're able to put out there to really assist uh, people in terms of their um, or waste to energy or odour control. Uh, there's lots of things that we really take take pride in, but making sure we've got uh, really satisfied end customers who are uh, who are making use of those products is, is critical for us. It really uh, uh, fills us with a sense of pride. Uh, while we were watching that, was a couple of uh, a couple of comments or questions that have come in from Lucas. Uh, so Western Victoria Piggery, you'd like to know about the initial H2S value. So uh, before it was reduced to 700. So 700 uh, was the starting uh, parts per million. So the, I think the uh, the guidance on that specific generator was about 200 parts per million. So we were able to reduce it uh, significantly. Um, how long was the retention time uh, for the entire system and effectiveness in terms of uh, usage by using ActiMag? So ActiMag is, is because of the high surface area, it's, uh, it's quite effective in terms of um, uh, being able to react quickly so I think this this system uh, look I can't I can't really remember off the top of my head but uh, it's in the order of uh, in the order of, of days in terms of uh, retention time of the of the uh, the solid waste and would you suggest uh, in terms of dosage to see achieve a 30% uh, increment in biogas uh, on average from an anaerobic digester so that's that's a, a pretty specific question. Uh, probably something I can't answer without actually seeing your system. Um, it depends on the efficiency that your system is currently running at, your anaerobic system. Uh, just like if somebody gives me a, uh, a, a pH number, I, pro I can't really tell them how much ActiMag they need to add in order to adjust the pH by a certain amount because there's other factors involved. There's alkalinity, there's bacterial... Um, action in the background that's going on so I'd suggest uh, let's uh, if you're interested in, in, in terms of how much uh, how much you would need to use in order to get uh, a certain amount of benefit uh, get in touch uh, we can do some laboratory testing at your site um, initial consultation is, is completely free there's no obligations or anything like that so uh, we're always interested in helping people out uh, to get the most out of their biogas systems um, because it, it it's fantastic for the environment uh, and and people uh, get get real value out of adding ActiMag, so uh, it's good for good for the end user and uh, and and good for good for us um, in order to help the environment. Uh, that more or less concludes the webinar for this week. Uh, one last thing that I would like to suggest um, before we go is. Uh, Calix is a corporate sponsor of WaterAid. Uh, WaterAid's a fantastic charity that works around the world in order to make sure that people who've got uh, access to fresh water and also sanitation. Uh, it's, it, it is very important um, in order to make sure, especially during pandemics, to make sure that people have got clean supplies of water and also uh, good control of that, that sanitation. So. Uh, if at this time you've got, uh, whether it's uh, your company or an, as an individual, um, you've got the capability to, to donate to a charity, I think WaterAid is doing fa fantastic work around the world in, in terms of uh, helping people out with, uh, with clean water and sanitation. Uh, and as, as, a, as a corporate sponsor, Calix puts in, um, and we personally uh, 
we personally put in i'm a i'm a water aid ambassador to really help out the uh the cause in terms of being able to raise raise money and funds to to help out countries that aren't as lucky as us so um if you've got the capability it would be fantastic if you uh if you could, could consider donating Okay, uh, I'll just finally check the, uh, there's no more questions that have come in yet. Uh, if you are interested in uh, adding or asking any more questions, or don't feel comfortable putting questions uh, on in a public, uh, public forum, please send us an email, jump on our website. We've got a chat uh, in, the, in the bottom corner of our website that you can, you can have a talk to our fantastic uh, uh, one of our fantastic managers, Audrey, uh, she'll be able to help you out and point you in the right direction in terms of uh, if, if you need help uh, with systems or you're interested in any of the Calyx products to boost biogas, uh, to maximise the amount of calorific value. But uh, look, thank you very much for joining us uh, this week in the biogas webinar. Next week, we're going to have a uh, fantastic webinar. Uh, it's with uh, an interview between uh, one of our uh, key account managers, Sam Sood, and our in, one of our expert engineers who uh, designs dosing systems for ActiMag, for odour control, uh, for biogas systems. Uh, Shane Repke, he's uh, an, an expert. He spent a long time in Australia uh, behind a behind an engineering desk, uh, but he also he spent a lot of time out in the field. So the, the, that interview is going to be uh, a, a fantastic interview to get his insights about the best way to apply. Uh, ActiMag and, and other chemical dosing systems into the uh, to uh, to make your life easier uh, when it comes to handling chemicals. Uh, so don't forget to tune into that. It's Thursday, ten o'clock next week. Uh, it will be a fantastic interview. And uh, if you've got any other ideas for webinars, if you run if you run a biogas consultancy, other things like that, um, get in touch. I'm like we've got we've got a long time that we're going to be doing these webinars hopefully it'll be an ongoing thing so doing interviews uh, might be a, a fantastic way that we can uh, we can interact with uh, other people out there that wouldn't mind getting their um, their message out so please get in touch uh, via our website if you're interested in that and look thank you very much for joining us today we hope it's provided uh, a, at least a little bit of entertainment and value during this hard time uh, and with any luck uh, we'll see you next week Thank you very much. Calyx was founded in 2005 by myself and a Queenslander named Colin Hawley. He had a great idea for a new type of kiln or furnace. As Connor and I developed the idea, it became apparent that the technology had the potential to be applied to many industries and could help address some of the world's most pressing problems. We raised some money, did some small scale testing and gave some great results, encouraged us to build a commercial scale facility at Bacchus Marsh in Victoria. The Calyx flash calciner or CFC process involves grinding minerals or other feedstocks to between 100 and 1,000th of a millimetre in size, then flash heating them in an externally heated reactor in a very short time, up to about 950 degrees centigrade. As trapped gases in the material bubble out through the particles, they create highly porous structures. These particles are then cooled very quickly, leaving a very porous, honeycomb-like structure. New materials produced by the CFC are proven to have similar reactive properties to nanoparticles, without the safety concerns and high costs, but with all the benefits that nanotechnology is developing into numerous products, applications and markets. I joined Calyx in 2013 because I could sense the huge potential of this technology. Uh, it's a platform technology that has two sides, production of nanoactive materials on the one hand and the potential to be applied in CO2 capture on the other. Our first commercial product was released in 2013 for wastewater treatment, followed closely by two more products in 2014, one for infrastructure protection and a specialty chemical additive. All these products are now in export. In addition to our commercial products, we also have some pre-commercial products already in paid trials in Asia and Europe that look really exciting. One's a water conditioner to help with uh, yields and environmental problems in aquaculture. And the other's a non-toxic, environmentally friendly, 
broad spectrum crop protection product. We also have a rich research and development pipeline with some really exciting developments in advanced batteries as well as CO2 capture for the lime and cement industries. Additionally, if the materials have trapped CO2, the technology can separate that CO2 directly for no additional energy penalty. For example, limestone by weight is approximately 50% CO2, which is released as a gas when making lime, and is therefore why the cement and lime industries are very CO2 intensive. Application of the technology in CO2 mitigation is thus of interest to those industries. And we're piloting these programs uh, with over 25 million in funding from Australian and European governments. And we are working with some of the world's largest companies in these areas. Having proven its commercial products and business models, Calix is about to embark on some serious market entries into the US, Europe and Asia to grow its revenues and margins. We will also continue to develop our pre-commercial products into fully fledged commercial products and processes through both direct and distribution sales and licensing strategies. And lastly, we'll continue to develop the multitude of high potential R&D applications into some of the world's fastest growing industries. Calix really is all about creating new materials and processes to solve global challenges.